In my last DIY beaded jewelry video, you guys had so many questions, so many requests, and you want me to do more. And I'm so thankful for that. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for giving love to that video. So here I am. I'm back and let's make some jewelry. <laughs> You're making too much noise. If you guys didn't see the last video, I got this kit off of Amazon. I'll make sure to link it down below for you guys. I'm pretty sure they're three millimeter beads. And then the kit is so cute because it comes with cute little tweezers as well as cute little tiny scissors. It does come with lettered beads, but I'm not gonna be using those. And then they also do come with black and white elastic string. A lot of you guys were asking if mine was elastic and this kit did come with elastic string. And last but not least, they actually came with some jump rings and some clasps and I know a lot of you guys had some questions on how to tie it so I'll be teaching you that today. Also I have a bunch of different kinds of beads from like Michaels or the dollar store. I literally have these pearl beads from like the Dollar Tree and then these are also from the Dollar Tree. They are colored square letters. So I have all of my materials here. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here are all of my materials. First, we're going to start off with a super simple necklace. So I'm not going to be using any letters for this one, I don't think. So I just put my letters to the side. We are going to be using some of these beads, but not all of them. We're mainly going to be using the pearl beads. In my last video, I used this white elastic string. A lot of you guys had questions whether it was elastic, so here it is. I do have black elastic string, but... I don't really like how it looks under the beads, so I'm gonna put this aside. Again, we also have my jump rings and my clasps, so we're gonna be using that. This is the kit from Amazon, as I showed you guys. As you guys know, I love pink, so I really like using these two colors right here. But for this necklace, I'm gonna be using this one. I'm just gonna be taking a couple of those. Actually, I should take quite a few. <laughs> I have these colors here. And then I have my pearls. Like I did last time, I'm just gonna be measuring this around my neck just to make sure. Always try to make it a little bit longer just in case. This should be the perfect length. So now I'm just gonna cut it with my cute little scissors. After I've cut it, I'm just gonna tape down the string just so that it's not as confusing. I'm using a different kind of tape today because I couldn't find my normal tape. For this necklace, we are gonna be going back and forth with the pearl and these cute coral beads. So first, I think I should go with the coral just because the clasp and the jump ring will be right here just so that it'll give it a nice look and not have it so big, if that makes sense. So now we're gonna go with the pearl. I don't know if I should do double pearl and then the coral. Let's see so when you're making these beaded necklaces beaded jewelry honestly just experiment and see what you like sometimes i feel like i have a method and then sometimes i don't so right now i think i got my method down it's gonna be two pearls in between one coral bead i'm just gonna be repeating myself Okay, pause. Look at these three and then look at these two. I wonder if I can break them. I don't know if that's a good idea actually. I probably can't do that. No, that's a no. This, there's also, oh my gosh, there's so many. <gasps> How am I gonna, okay. They're quick baiting. <laughs> first necklace i think it's so adorable it's simple i love it you see how i started off with the smaller bead and then i also ended with the smaller bead so kind of just being cohesive and making sure everything looks 
good. So I'm thinking silver might actually look good with this. So I'm gonna grab a silver jump ring and a silver clasp. So here is our clasp and our jump ring. So for this kit that I got on Amazon for the jump ring, see how it's a little bit open? We are the ones who actually has to close it with, you can either use tweezers to close it. That's what I'm gonna do. Or you can find another way. I'm not really sure what other way there is, but tweezers are what helped me and not specifically these tweezers, like actual tweezers. See how I have my grip on the both top and bottom. I'm just gonna try and squeeze it together and that's basically what I did for the last video as well. It does take a couple tries which is kind of annoying. I've connected it now and that's what it looks like. So this part is actually really easy. I think just a lot of people had questions on how I did it because I didn't really show it. I wasn't really giving directions clearly. So so what I did is either take the clasp or the junk ring. I guess it doesn't really matter. Take the jump ring and loop it through the string and now it's through the string right you see that okay a lot of people were asking how i tied it and honestly it's such a simple knot it's like tying your shoes you know over and under it's a pretty simple knot and just tie it like that and just to make sure it's very secure, I want to tie it one more time. It's like tying your shoe for the first time. The very first step, if that makes sense. So I hope that helped you guys. So now that's what that looks like. Now I'm actually going to cut super close, but not too close, just in case it does fall off right there. And then there is your jump ring. Okay, so now that the jump ring is connected, I'm going to take out the tape here that's holding everything together and making sure it's super, super tight and just like kind of pulling on the string. And so now it's pretty secure in there. For this part, you take the clasp and it's basically the same thing. For the clasp, I'm sure you guys can see there's like a little loop through here. That's where I put the string through. Loop the string through. And then try not to lose grip on the necklace and making sure it's still super tight and secure and there's no excess string showing or anything like that because all of this will be cut off, obviously. So we're basically going to tie it just like how we did for the other one. Secure it. And that's what it should look like. So basically, I'm just making sure that these beads are as tight as possible so that the string is not showing. You can tie it again for the third time just to be sure. There you go. I really hope that made a lot of sense for you guys. So now we're just going to cut it. Again, not too far and not too close, but just right there. We are going to make another necklace today, do the same thing, measure out the string with your neck and then that's where you can cut it off. Now we're actually going to have a little bit more fun. I really want to do a bunch of pastel colors but I want to make some daisies. So of course for the color selections I love my pastels and colorful colors so I'm going to first go with white which is like the base I guess or I don't know if I should go with this. I think we can go with white. This is the closest to a lighter purple, so I really want to use that. And then I also really love using the pink color, and this one's like a pastel pink. So we're going to put in a couple of whites first. So now I'm looping in four purple ones, and now it's time for a white one, which is going to be the center of the flower. Taking that string and looping it over the very first purple. There you go. And then making sure it's pretty tight there. You guys will see there's obviously room here, but that's just because I forgot to make sure to leave room for the clasp and jump ring. <laughs> so now it's time to put in three purples. Now that I've put three, our string and loop it through this top petal. 
and then there is our flower i'm doing about five whites and then after this white we will do a pink flower again looking for about the same kind of beads just so it doesn't look wonky okay so we're gonna put in more whites this time let's try i don't know if 10 might be too much so we can try okay now we put in the pink okay now i'm gonna put in a white for the center and that's what it should look like and again looping this string on the very first pink when it comes to making these flowers you have to make sure that your beads are super super tight together so make sure that the pink is super close to the bead next to it i've now put in the three beads now we're going to take the very top and loop it through here and then there is our flower these two are so cute just finished with the necklace i realized that if you're gonna do a flower necklace make sure you have extra string because this is kind of on the shorter side and it is more of like a choker necklace so just keep in mind to make sure your string is a little bit longer than you think we're gonna go back with our jump rings and our clasp and we're basically going to do the same thing that I showed you guys on how to tie it and stuff. Make sure you have those tweezers handy. I feel like this is really hard to explain, but again, I'm just kind of pushing the jump ring together so that I'm able to secure the string when I do have it on. Now I'm going to be tying the clasp. I have a little bit less room, so this one is going to be a little bit difficult to tie. Now just make sure the clasp is super close. There you go. And then I'm just going to tie it one more time and then do the same thing to the jump ring. so last but not least we're actually gonna be making just like what I did in my last video we're gonna make a phone charm for this one it's just gonna be all flowers and we can add some letters I'm gonna be choosing a bunch of colors for this one just so it's fun let's start off with just a simple color and I know for a phone charm it's probably not the best idea to have it stretchy but that is what I have <laughs> Okay, so I just finished the flowers. Wow, this literally takes forever, but it turned out so cute. It is on the shorter side, but I still think it's adorable. I love that the baby is like literally just right there. This phone case is from Casetify. It's so cute. If you guys want 15% off, you can click the link in the description. This is not sponsored or anything. I just really do love them. I'm actually going to cut this because this string is a little bit too long. I'm going to cut this right now. What I'm gonna do is actually take this bead and loop it in between both of the strings so that it will connect when we go down so now i'm going to tie this together the string is super short so it's my mistake So we ended up making two necklaces today. I'm wearing one of them right now. And then we have the flower one. And then we have the phone charm. That's a little bit too short. But at least you guys got to watch this video and learn, I hope. I hope it was at least super fun to watch for you guys. Again, this kit will be linked down below as well as everything else that I used in this video except the stuff that I got from the dollar store. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. And I hope that I answered some of your questions from the last video. If you guys like seeing me make beaded jewelry, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and comment down below as well, letting me know so that I can keep doing it for you guys because it's so much fun. If you are not subscribed to my channel, make sure to subscribe. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.